I'm here in the rugged Kimberley region in northern Western Australia. Searing temperatures and brutal terrain mean that getting lost out here can have life-threatening consequences. Six guys from a Sydney advertising agency who avoid conflict at any cost are about to put themselves to the ultimate test, left out here on their own to survive in the wilderness. So how will they cope when it's a question of do or die? A leader's born or made. The six creative geeks from the Big Smoke with some hidden problems are about to find out in a gruelling test of Outback survival. <laughs> Putting them under the pump, top corporate psychologist Dr Travis Kemp, who believes in the power of experiential learning. I've got a really strong belief that people can absolutely change. There's one thing I didn't want, which was caves and water. These experiences are a lot about people's behaviour. <laughs> their thinking. There's drowning in the caves or heat exhaustion through the plains. And the emotions that they feel when they're out in these wilderness environments. It's a little bit scary to hear that. So you can keep finding smart answers to these questions or you can get real. When they've got those three things working for them, they're absolutely going to be successful in that change. But can Dr Kemp solve the problems of a whole workplace? To find out, he's about to turn just another day at the office into a battle for survival. Inner City Sydney, home to Soap Creative, a highly successful digital advertising agency where geeks and creatives pump out award-winning, cutting-edge stuff. We do advertising campaigns for pretty much anything with a screen, so a mobile phone, a computer, a kiosk, games, websites. Meet Ash, co-founder of Soap and a somewhat reluctant boss. I don't really consider myself the boss here. Um, we have kind of a very flat structure, so very collaborative process and collaborative office. Brett has been with Soap for about six years. He agrees with his boss. Everyone gets along um, really well. Um, it's a nice young company. Um, no one really feels like an outcast, I don't think. Next in the non-hierarchical pecking order is Matt, the oldest member of the team. We are pretty tight-knit, and I guess there's a fair few of us who've worked together for many years, so we kind of know how each one of us sort of react to certain scenarios and situations. Let's go, Brett. So, as far as the old guard go, it's a strong, tight-knit, collaborative culture, and they want to keep it that way. Brendan joined about a year ago. He's learning to fit in well. They're quite particular about who they employ, so we're not bringing in people who don't match from the start. And then once we're in here, there's a lot of stuff so it does um, to keep the culture alive. The newest kid on the block is Jar. We have a really easygoing, respectful culture with one another. When things are getting tough, we all chip in and get the work done. While Boss Ash might see so creative as essentially flat in structure, John, the junior graphic designer, has no illusions about where he fits in. Being the sort of the young guy in the office, you're the, sort of the junior, you are sort of like, you know, the, the lower end of the, the pack. And he knows he's got a lot to prove. This is my first job, and so I really want to get a good number of years under my belt. Um, learn a lot from Ash and the crew that are here and everyone above me. So they go. Collaborative, tight-knit, and apparently non-hierarchical. It seems like a happy workplace. That's great when your company is just a handful of chums starting out in the world. But now there's a staff of about 70, based both in Australia and the US. So can Soap Creative continue as a matey boys club? Yeah! Oh, nice. Bushman and corporate shrink Dr Travis Kemp believes it's time for a change. Soap Creative are an incredibly successful, energised and creative organisation. Their success has been astonishing. But to continue to grow in the future, they're going to need to start demonstrating leadership not just from Ashley as the boss, but across the whole organisation. So the big challenge for this group this week is to start leading each other in a whole new way. The boys from Soap Creative don't realise that this is no ordinary corporate team building exercise. They'll be pushed to their limits in a gruelling survival scenario in the remote and unforgiving Kimberley wilderness. I do prefer the do rather than the die in the title. I'm hoping there won't be any die. 
I did, you know, scouts and adventurers when I was a child, so um, the outdoorsiness of it really appeals to me. Um, yeah. Physically, I think I've got it on everyone. Yeah, if there's anything for survival, I think I'm going to be pretty much number one. I don't do any PT because yeah, I did like the video game training on the Xbox and that, that, that almost uh, made me collapse. That should be the weakest link. <laughs> I'm going to pay for that later on, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. It's 43 degrees in the shade. And the nearest Wi-Fi connection is like 200 k's away. But Dr. Travis believes that if you can survive in the wilderness, you can shine in the workplace. Welcome. Nice to meet you, Ashley. Welcome, Ashley. Welcome to the Kimberley. Thank you. My name's Dr. Travis Kemp, and I'm going to be your facilitator for the next five days. So there's a couple of things about adventures that you need to know up front. There's two things that make an adventure an adventure. One is that there's some risk involved, and the other thing is that there's some uncertainty involved. And I can guarantee you over the next five days, there's going to be a lot of risk and a lot of uncertainty. Are you up for it? Yes. Yes. Alright, so let's get ourselves changed and then we'll kick off. Next, Travis will present their first challenge. One that could make all the difference in their struggle to survive. What we've got in front of you here is everything that you're going to need for the next five days to survive and to flourish. So you're going to need to make the choices that you need to make in regards to the gear that you're going to take. There's a couple of things I really need you to think about though. One is that water is your most important resource out here. Think carefully about how you take your water and what you do with that. The other thing that you've got available to you here is 48 hours worth of food. Remember that you need to carry everything that you're going to be taking with you. And that after walking around in 43 degree heat for half a day, you're going to know every kilo that you're carrying. So choose very wisely, and you've got about 20 minutes to make those decisions now. So I'll leave it to you. Alright, shall we work out what we want in the bag? Right now? My bag's a good one. Six. Yeah. Hey, Dubs, you need a bag. We can work out, work out the stuff that we uh, uh, we don't need. Is that water? Yeah, yeah. good idea. We don't need work the hairspray. Stuff that we don't need. And don't. then um, Brett's been camping before and wastes no time yet. stepping up to the mark to be decisive about what not to take. Should we move the things that we definitely won't need out of the way? Yeah, let's do so that. that. So that they're just, they're just out of the way. Okay. Let's move the stove. So there's chairs. Yeah. Yeah. Gas stove. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Why not the stove? Yeah. You don't need messy mate. We don't need those. We won't need the snorkel either. Why? Too much stuff to carry. Unmasked food. What is, is it? Rice? Do we know what it is? Is there any rice? <laughs> it could be dog food. Yeah, it could be anything. We're going to move on, guys. Everyone get your bag together and we'll know who's is who's. Everyone have a bag? I don't. Yeah. Um, so how's your water coming along, guys? Giving us the most important thing that you want to be yeah. taking uh, with you. What did you say? How many litres a day? As much as you can carry, I'll be taking. Yeah. Travis's 20 minute deadline is about to be overtaken by something much more pressing. At this time of year in the Kimberley, monster afternoon storms are a daily occurrence. We need to get some of the rope from this bucket. There's a thunderstorm just going to hit. They haven't even started to look at shelter yet, and I'm really fearful that they're not going to pick up any tarps, and they're going to need them in about half an hour. But guys, this is a wet season at its best, and we need to get a move on. Their priority is to establish a camp so they can shelter before hitting the track in the morning. Instead, they're workshopping their options. A couple of tarps. Uh, we put them have like a maybe pile. <laughs> well, I reckon you got about another 20 minutes, 25 20 minutes. minutes before it pours. Before it really pours. So you want to have a shelter up by then? Shelter up by then. Here? Uh, I probably wouldn't put it here. We'll, we'll go and find another place for that. Okay. Well, should we be working out what we can we uh, talk okay. stuff out under shelter? Mm -hmm. Sure, great, right. buddy. I think we're gonna. Yeah, we'll get all the stuff we need, carry all our bags, our new bags and our, our own bags. And then we get some shelter and then we'll we'll pack everything up properly. Go while we wait. 
Yeah, he's tough for us for us. So. Just keep it there for now. Just, and around that one there. So yeah. remember, the first thing that you need to do is get these tarps up. Time is of the essence. Do it's a rope across, and then they, they tie up in the middle, and then we'll just do like okay, a... Okay, yeah, Joe, I'll take that bit. Mate. And we need to get some sticks or something just to uh, work as pegs. Oh, I've got them in my like This is going to no, rain down the middle, won't it? Yeah, that's why you need to tie a knot to it. Hang on, let's get we get this one and we get another one going down and we have to get a gap in the middle. Okay, yeah. and it's like just... Yeah, yeah. and we'll get some, get some pegs or something like that. low and just go like, bend them down like that. Yeah, yeah. Like that. that's what we're going to do. Yeah, that's what we're we'll doing. You want that? On both sides. Uh, Much drier under here. And then, and then once that's done, oh, yeah. they're not here. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's going to slide back to the Yeah, but it's yeah. just going to rain right down the middle. Yeah, I know, but what do we do? It's better than nothing, man. Well, you get them... Overlapping? No, 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 we get them and we... Have this as the centerpiece. Yeah. And then you try and turn the middle and then shelter up like that. All in that one, we just one little tent. Yeah, 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 fair enough. Doug. Six brain guys with some serious IQ between them. Then you take it down. Right. So, why are they struggling with the little tarps and yeah, ignoring the big one and covering it? Anyway. We're going to all get under that? Yeah, well, we're going to have to for now. We're going to have to for now. We've got no other option. want to break that off. And why isn't Ash, the boss, taking control of the situation? No, no, I'm trying to look at Poor communication and a lack of leadership could be bad for business. Out here, it can be disastrous. This is about the worst conditions that you can possibly get, and they're frustrated and they're panicking a little bit. They just need to slow things down. They've actually got some big tarps there that would work better than what they're trying at the moment. And I think they're onto that now, so they're going to have a crack at it. But they're wet. As the sun sets, the soap team put the finishing touches to their damp campsite. After all the rain, lighting a fire is their next challenge. All right, fingers crossed. <laughs> Come on, first bell attempt. For the tech savvy soap boys, this is a real getting back to basics moment. <laughs> I've got a box, I think everyone's got a box. But mine's wet right now, mine's wet right now. I have a dry box, guys, don't worry. You unlock an achievement for this? <laughs> <laughs> Started a fire? <laughs> never never been it. so proud of just something so basic. <laughs> the opening day's confusion, indecision and consequent drenching must have been a wake-up call for the team. Is it a cue for a new way of working? Soap boss Ash lays his cards on the table. When I'm not working, I prefer other people to make decisions for me because I spend all my time just making decisions. So this is just a week of not having to make any decisions. It would be great. <laughs> <laughs> so we now know what Ash is going to get out of the isn't it? Yeah. Sit back and relax. No, I, don't, I, don't mind, I don't mind being yeah. told what to do. It's more like, I, yeah, this is, I'm out of my comfort zone here, so I'd rather say, you guys know what you're doing. Let me know how I can help. So is Ash stepping back because he really is a democratic kind of guy? Or is there something more fundamental going on that the coming days will expose? It's really nice place. Yeah, it's really... We can cook tins and stuff for lunch. Because it's easy, because all you need to do is don't... Having risen early, the soap creative team is taking advantage of the overnight rain to stock up ahead of their big day in the outback. But that begs one question. So how much water did you leave on the tarp yesterday? Probably uh, four litres. You left four litres of water on the tarp? Yeah. And can you remember what I said up front when we first met? Need to drink Water's the most important. Water's the most important thing. You need to be drinking every 15 minutes and you need to look after each other, right? Yeah. So I'm a bit confused about why you left four litres of water on the tarp. We filled up almost all the bottles. That's great, but why did you leave four litres of water on the tarp? We took enough to get us wherever we were going to go. And not knowing where you're going to go, how did you make the judgement about how much you needed to go where you needed to go? That doesn't make any sense to me. Took as much as we could. Right. So you can keep finding smart answers to these questions or you can get real, right? Because I don't think it's sunk in that you are in the, one of the most inhospitable places in the world. And you are going to be trekking through this for the next three days. So whatever comes out of my mouth is usually a value. 
and I would listen to it. And you are smart guys. You're used to being very successful, but this is a different kettle of fish out here. Now Travis has their attention, he will give them some information that, if remembered, will be the key to their survival. If you do become disorientated, lost or separated, you need to keep heading up the creek system to a dwelling which is high on the banks, and at that point you will find food, water and safety. And the other thing that I want to encourage you to consider is choosing a leader for today's walk. So, who's that? Brett. 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 Okay. So, Brett, you're responsible for the group. Their safety, their well-being, how they get from here to where they want to go. Okay? So, I said yesterday that adventure was a lot about risk and uncertainty. And what I can tell you is that where we end up today is completely uncertain at this point in time. I have no idea. But we are going to be walking. Okay. Everyone's got water. Everyone's sun creams. Okay. Travis remains deliberately vague about where they're going and why. The uncertainty is part of the challenge. They're at the beginning of a long, almost circular journey that will take them up creeks and gorges prone to flooding, across hot, dry plains and through deep underground labyrinths. All they know is that they're following a riverbed for a while. 9.30. Right. We should have just got to work. <laughs> First coffee. So today's going to be a really tough day for them. We're going to be walking up a creek system. There's been a lot of rain overnight, so the creek's going to be wet. In a little while, they're going to get to a, uh, a couple of big challenges. One is a big pool of water that they're going to have to make a decision about whether they go around or go through. Now, that might not sound like a big decision, but getting your gear wet and getting you wet is a different way of thinking for these guys. They haven't been out in this environment before they have to make that decision. Down here. Oh no. The soap boys seem very determined not to get their feet wet, even if it means a more arduous and hazardous scramble up and down rocks. That's pretty deep. But staying dry is no longer an option. Still, Brett seeks consensus anyway. I think if we just waterproof our bags, and we're just going to have to carry and swim as best we can. So, I um, yeah. think that's the right way to go. I do. Yep. yep. Agreed. Okay. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Still. Wow. Just as the guys are getting the hang of the water holes, the creek suddenly plunges over a perilous drop. Should we, um, we send someone, because it was, it was a flat over here, and it's quite flat over there. And we can send someone around and just go and see. Oh, no, Group leader Brad sends out scouting parties to survey the alternatives. The choice is between a longer, hotter, but safer trek around the drop, or a quicker but far more hazardous clamber down the precipice. Back to base, guys, and we'll um, work out the best way down. Jar, Brendan. You don't need rope. You don't need rope? You can do it if you want. <laughs> and if you go to the side, we can come back down. Yeah? John okay. the Junior is gung-ho about the vertical okay. option. But the others aren't so sure. Are we going down that way? Yeah. Right, we got our ropes. We get our helmets. So we're just walking around. Walking around all the way down. Yep. 
through assessment up the top is going to be easier. There is no doubt that going up across the top here, coming down around, we can re-enter the gorge down the bottom part rather than going down all the rocks and dropping stuff and the see, risk of falling. Just, just think about going down this way, there's a lot more risk, there's a lot more steeper boulders as well. So maybe it might take a little bit quicker, maybe it might not. Yeah, I think it's take twice. Personally, I prefer not to take the risk. In this case, Soap's democratic decision-making culture pays off. They've weighed up the options and chosen safety. It's now early afternoon and the team head out onto a flat, hot plain. It's going to be 40 plus degrees in the sun today and they're going to be at risk of heat stroke and dehydration really quickly it's going to be very hard going and they're going to be tested to the maximum. Time for a break. I think I'm doing all right. We're, we're moving along and no one's been hurt and anything like that. I don't think there's been any arguments, so I think that's the, that's the main thing. You're getting the job done and um, not causing any grief. Boys have been good. Brett has led the team safely so far, but progress is slow. Is this a symptom of Soap's apparent lack of clear leadership and decision-making focus? Travis is interested in Ash's take on that. Even though Brett's the leader, we're all kind of still working collaboratively, I guess. Yeah. Is there any downside to running it that way? Sometimes decisions take a while to get made, or you know, there's no one, you know, it's not one person to say, okay, this is what we're doing. All right. It's yeah. always like, I always find myself, you know, I want to find out what other people think, so. Yeah. Being the collaborative person you are, how does it sit when you have to make a call and say, look, I'm just going to upset some people, keep other people happy? Yeah, so for me, if the majority's voted, that's the fairest option. You know, I'm always about being fair. You know, what's fair for the office and what's fair for everyone. So, yeah. So, Brett, thank you for um, your stint as leader. So I'm going to uh, relieve you of that responsibility now. OK. And, uh, and offer it to somebody else in the group. Who wants it? Yeah. Leadership seems to be a dirty word at Soap. Nobody wants to put their hand up. Least of all, Boss Ash. Ja. Ja? I'll do it, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Alright. Cool. So, the congratulations. Yeah. Alright, well, let's go. Eventually, they continue under the new management of Ja. By late afternoon, the boys have negotiated a creek system and crossed a searing plain. But now, for something completely different. So, guys, the next part of our journey is upstream. This is the beginning of a network of ancient caves stretching for nearly 50 kilometres underground. If they are to reach the designated camping spot by nightfall, they have no other option but to go through here. So, I Get yourself organised to uh, go for a bit of a swim. They're going to be going into a cave system that's flooded and they're going to be swimming through that cave system. People can get lost really easily in these systems. It's dark and it only takes five minutes to get completely separated from each other. So they're going to need to keep in contact with each other constantly, keep an eye on each other and look out for each other and really help each other to push through their barriers to get out the other side. Are you guys standing or...? Um, Jar doesn't swim, doesn't like water. There's a lot of water in the cave. Matt, on the other hand, is claustrophobic. He doesn't like small places. So these guys are really doing it tough, but putting in a big effort to push themselves through their individual fears to be successful for the sake of a group. Yep, we're going this way, guys. All right, come on. There's a rock just here on your left. Let's move the bags up, guys. Let's just move the bags up one at a time. 
Yeah, and Let's out. bring all the bags up so we yeah. can stick it. What are we doing? It's been a long, demanding day. And the mates from Soap are tired, wet, and disoriented. Frustrations are beginning to show with passive boss Ash. Yeah, we're filling it up a bit, Ash, and I'll just stay there. I'm yeah. doing nothing at the moment. Huh? Okay. Just, just leave it there. You, you go up a bit, Ash. <laughs> go up a bit, Ash. We've got the. Oh, yeah, that's it. After nearly an hour underground, they re emerge into the light. For Matt, it's been a particularly memorable experience. I've been better. There's one thing I didn't want, which was caves and water. So I guess I got both. That was really, really cool. Did really well. We got through unscathed. I think Brendan copped a bit of a whack on the head. Really? How's your head? <laughs> Seeing stars. Stick my glasses up So well done, guys. It was a huge effort. On reaching their destination for the day, Travis imparts another key piece of information the boys will need to remember. Campsites and stuff over here on the left, that's where we'll be spending the night. But it's important to know also is that this creek system actually continues on further up into another cave system, heads through there. Okay. Sounds, Sounds good. Cool. Excellent. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Journey through the cave represents more than just an outdoor adventure challenge. To local Aboriginal people, this is a gateway into an area of particular spiritual significance. And for Travis, it's important that they have permission to cross this country. On behalf of all the Gunyandi people, we'll do this smoke ceremony for protection, for healing, and for any bad spirits you might have had when you come in. It'll take the bad spirits away. And give you all protection in your stay in this country. Really feel like connected to the land suddenly, like we've actually arrived. Mm. The mates from Soap are tired, but buoyed by their experience. The high point was how well we all worked as a team today, I think. No one got no one got angry, no one no one complained, really. Reinforcing that um, that we're all we're all good mates and we all work well together. Yeah. Mm. However, Travis begins to question the group's view of itself. It's a really strong story that gets played out in this group quite often, how good a mates you are, how well you work together as a team. And I saw a lot of evidence for that today, there's no question about that. But unless you're a super special team, there's flaws and challenges and opportunities that need to be addressed as well. So what did you see around that sort of stuff today? Well, I had John W. give me, hassling me because I wasn't moving fast enough. And so it was like, you know, get told, take your time, take your time. And then so I was like, let's keep moving, let's keep moving. So I'm putting on my shoes, you know. It takes a certain amount of time to put on your shoes. And I just didn't feel like I needed to be hassled to hustle any faster, you know. Yeah. Sometimes I just get a little bit impatient. Um, it's, it's just a lot harder when, I don't know, I'm not bigging myself up, but like physically I can move a lot quicker, but then when you have to sort of slow back for everyone else, that can, so that's a personal challenge for me to sort of just like ease up, chill out. You know, there's a couple of times we'll, um, we're in the cave there and we sort of got blocked up because we didn't know what was going on. I just wanted to get out of the water as quick as I could. And so I guess I was probably hassling a little bit to get everyone moving. Yep. Yeah. So uh, tomorrow your good team is going to be put to an even more severe test and you're going to be faced with a whole bunch more challenges uh, and a whole bunch more um, uncertainty. So um, it'll be a good opportunity to really put this good team into a situation where it can become a great team. And to do that you're going to need to be doing all the things that you've done up until this point and then some. Yeah. Well into their outback odyssey, the team from Soap Creative are beginning to feel the effects of the great outdoors. That was a pretty horrible night. It was pretty hot, we couldn't get cool. It's just drinking heaps of water. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not getting comfortable, it's getting worse. <laughs> but John the Junior needs to shape up quickly 
He's got big responsibilities. Save your spot for you, mate. Once again, head honcho Ash remains backward in coming forward, deciding instead that John is pushy enough to take charge today. Yeah. This morning the group chose me uh, to be the leader. I don't know why. <laughs> I think they just said, um, mate, you've been wanting to hurry along, you know, the, the whole time and hustling us along so you can be, you can take up the, uh, the leadership today. But yeah, I think it'll be, I'm going to take it as a real valuable opportunity to sort of, to show the group that, you know, I am mature. Their bags are packed and they're ready to go. But in order to shake things up, Travis has decided to disappear. We haven't seen Travis today. We got up this morning and, and packed up, ready to go, and, um, and we haven't seen anything of him, so, so we're uh, hopefully waiting to see him. It hasn't sunk in yet, but they are now on their own. So they don't have anybody guiding them. It's going to be really interesting to see where they've got the initiative, the persistence and the support for each other to navigate their way out of this. Six indecisive mates marooned in a rugged and unforgiving wilderness with about a day's supply of food remaining. Travis believes that by triggering this survival scenario, he will also trigger a more proactive approach. So we can um, go and try to find him, send two people out a little bit. Could be injured. It could be injured. Right, we'll do that now. Send a scout party out, see if he's anywhere close by. After waiting around for most of the morning, they decide to send out a search party. Travis! 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 We need to find him. He's, um... Yeah. Travis! 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 They seem genuinely concerned about my well-being. Uh, they, they actually are starting to think that something has happened to me and they actually need to go and look for me. It's a really interesting response. But uh, they're finally starting to get into the mode of we need to do something and it's not sit around here. No, have you? No. Uh, There's no sign of Travis back in the direction they came from. So should they perhaps go forward instead? Time for another meeting. But he hasn't turned up yet. <laughs> it's 12 o'clock. As long as some of us stay here. We need to try to find him. I did say yesterday that that cave leads out. Maybe he went up there and something happened to him. Maybe we should gear up. Well, I uh, reckon. All of us at once. Who's I'm it? happy to go out, I'll be one. If he says it leads out, then, yeah. So we uh, need two more people. Yeah, I'll go. Okay. Ash. Yeah. Willis. Yeah, welcome. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. We'll put our helmets on. No um, packs or just helmets? Yeah, we'll go no packs. Okay. It may have taken most of the morning yeah, to get around to it, but John seems to be grasping the concept of leadership and being refreshingly decisive. Um, a, we're going to work off 20 minutes, so we're going to go 10 minutes in and 10 minutes to get back out. Um, we've got a whistle system. Um, if we find Travis, um, that's one whistle. Um, if we're in danger, it's two whistles. Uh, if we find Travis and we need you to come in, it's three. Okay, cool. yeah, we're all clear with that. That's all good. Are you happy with that? That sounds good. Thanks cool. Five boys. Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Let's go. Travis! You could be unconscious. We're out of our, our normal oh. zone. And, uh, and Travis is kind of our guide. Um, and with the information that he's given us, um, really, if something happens on one day, then we hope it's gonna happen the next. Mm. But, um, but we're out here with him, with him as our guide, so we don't wanna go anywhere and leave and, and try to do things with, without him. And he didn't tell us that he was going as well, so. Of all the people in the group, Brett seemed the most concerned about my wellbeing and, and what we were gonna do without me. The other interesting thing about Brett is that he likes to know what's happening and he likes to be in control. And there's none of that out here for him at the moment. He's not sure where he's going. He certainly can't control this environment and the people around him. And I think he's finding it a little bit stressful at times. What if Travis wasn't coming back? Well, we'd need to wait long enough to know that he's not coming back. 
um, I think. Mm. We have supplies for, we probably have supplies for two nights, I think. Uh, two days, sorry. Um, we've got water purification. We'd um, need to discuss this as a group where to go forward, I think. I was really specific with the group up front. I said, if you were to become lost or separated, the best way to go would be to head upstream along the creek system and look for a dwelling where they would find safety, food and shelter. Finally, Brett begins to remember. We've also been informed yeah. on the first day that we should find dwellings somewhere. Um, so that's, that's an option. 20 minutes later, the scouts return. Still no Travis. So what now? Are we going to stay here? I don't think we should all necessarily leave straight away. No? Yeah. If we just sit here, we've also, what we worked out, a day left of food. Is he lost or do we just have to find him because he's ahead of us? So has he gone in the direction he said we were going to go and we're wasting time not catching up to him? Why, why would he go where we're about, where we haven't been? Like? There's drowning in the caves or heat exhaustion and dehydration through the plains. For a bunch of savvy guys stranded in the cruel wilderness, also, they're taking an awful long time to get to the point. One of the problems with using that really collaborative model where everybody likes each other all the time is that decisions are very, very hard to make and they take a long time. When you have to listen to everybody every time you make a decision, it's just impossible when the organisation gets too big. And that's where they're at at the moment. They really need to start thinking about letting go of that methodology, coming up with a new way of doing things and really changing the way they behave to make that happen. On the first day, he said you might find a dwelling. Yep. Um, and then he said yesterday the thing about going up the caves to you. Should we make a move? Yeah. yeah. It's now early afternoon. The soap boys have lost half a day deciding what to do about missing Travis. Finally. They have decided to head through the caves and look for the dwelling upstream. This cave system is a continuation of the same network that weaves 50 kilometres underground. But today's section is far longer and more complex than yesterday's little appetizer. Really loose rocks down here. Matt's claustrophobia will be tested to the limit in a labyrinth of dead ends, perilous climbs, and narrow squeezes. Gonna get on your knees, guys. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm all good. It's really tight up here. You all right, Brennan? Yeah, I'm through. You guys OK back there? Yep, all good. OK, we're going to carry on. There's multiple canyons going everywhere. Does it open up? Doesn't look like there's a path there. Yeah, it's pain in the ass this way. And no exit. Up here there is light on the left. Oh! Fuck. Willis? Are you alright? Yeah, I just got battered. I think you're right, Dubs. Go that way. Was their decision to enter the caves alone a good idea? Alright, we'll get around up in here. This is no place to find yourself lost. There's multiple caverns, canyons, openings, gaps, holes, bats. And the longer they stay here, the more chance of being trapped by floodwaters from the afternoon storms. You picked a good day to leave, Dubs. They know the key to getting out is to locate and follow the riverbed. It's just a matter of them finding the water before the water finds them. We haven't searched this one yet. So you two are going that way? We'll go over and look at the spot. Have you got a whistle? I can yell. Well, we should do Get a whistle, because if you're hurt, you can't yell. I don't mind doing it. Looks like there is a creek down the bottom there. You found the river? Um, yep, we found the river. Awesome. Um, it would be awesome if it was awesome, but it's not that awesome. It's really treacherous and really not the nicest place to be. Yep. Not keen on this at all. Yeah, got it. Just be careful, it's a pretty massive drop off, hey. Whenever you're ready, buddy. Yeah. Okay, well there you go. No worries, so you've got to get up here yet, it's not over yet. 
There's little crevices everywhere, so if you fall through, you're going to die. I can see light now. I can see the sky and a tree. All right, so maybe we head up through there. Drunk jam. You good, mate? What dubs and I reckon is that hole up there is the way out. After nearly two hours, John the Junior leads them towards the light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, man, it's pretty spectacular. Three o'clock. Oh. Oh, dude. Ash, it's been an awesome experience. For Travis, this achievement should mark a turning point in their psychology. Now, they've come out the other end successful, and that's got to buoy their spirits. You know, if they can get through that, they can do anything. So there's a new energy that's been built into the group, and it's going to put them in a really good position for the next day. It's late afternoon. Both time and daylight are running out. But now they're on a roll, they decide to push on. They're meant to be heading upstream towards some kind of dwelling and safety, but they've got no idea how much further that is. They do know that it's probably not a good idea to hang around a riverbed during the rainy season. Well, if there's just going to be rain, then the water can pick up around here. But there's no other path. It's either back or forward. Yeah. We can't wear in the middle. This isn't the wishy-washy soap creative team we know and love. With John still in charge, they've come over all butch and decisive. The sooner we get out of the gorge, the better. Let's do it. Later, there's no sign of the dwelling. But with storm clouds on the horizon, the guys decide it's time to park up for the night. Set up camp. Yep. Get our tents up. Under Brendan's leadership, the boys get an early start. Ash, the boss, remains doggedly in the background. But is he beginning to face the truth? I think this, this kind of strips you down to, like, are you a leader or a follower? And what I'm learning here is I probably have less uh, inherent leadership skills than I thought I did. Yeah, just as, I, you know, as we get to a gorge, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at the back, the other guys are marching forward, and you can see John definitely has probably a, a, an innate leadership thing because he's, he's right out there at the front. As far as John is concerned, Ash's recognition of his attributes is long overdue. The work environment still sees me as, as the junior. Um, I still have to put out the bins every now and again and um, do sort of stuff where I think, you know, hang on, I've been here for a few more years that, than other people that, you know, do I still deserve that role? But I guess I haven't said anything about it. I think that's one thing I'm learning that is I've got to, I've got to step up and, and be confident in myself and, and let them know that uh, this is what I'm feeling. There's a couple of ways of seeing this group. You could see it as an egalitarian society where everybody agrees with each other and all decisions are collaborative. Or you could also see it as an undercurrent running here that, you know, people just fall into place and comply and it doesn't have to be overtly spoken about, but Ash is the boss and the way Ash wants things, that's the way it gets done. So we need to watch that and see how it plays out because I suspect there might be an element of both. As per Travis's instructions about being lost or separated, they're following the river upstream in search of a dwelling on high ground. Like that way it goes back to flat land. So if we're looking up, then it's gonna be somewhere around here. In this short area that we can see with our eyes pretty much. If it's an Aboriginal dwelling, there wouldn't be they wouldn't have tents or anything, like got tarps that we have, so it would be something using the natural yeah. Yeah. land. What do you see, mate? Nothing. As the hours grind past, the climbing is taking its toll, and with little food left, they need to find the dwelling soon. Finally, it's Jar who finds an ancient cave. Looks like a place to have a fire. Yeah. Well sheltered. Okay, uh, cool. It's really cool up here. Uh, let's go and check it out. OK. That 
this afternoon. <laughs> Dominate it. Dominate it. This is the house. Oh, it's really cool here. The wind blowing. Oh, that's great. And there's more. A welcoming parcel, no less. Hey guys, I found some food. Oh, it sounds like tins and stuff like that. Huh? Oh, I mean, it's like Christmas. <laughs> pass the parcel. Pass the parcel. Put some music on. Now, something toxic is going to hit Jar first. Oh, here we go. It's a snake. <laughs> okay. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, nice. 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 Now, the soap boys have found their way to safety, food, and water. It's time for Travis to return to the fold. Hey. Hey, how are you guys? Good to see you. 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 Good to see The mates are high on their success, but aware also that it has raised questions about how Soap Creative operates. With just one more day to go, Travis is keen for them to seize whatever moments are left. Time for the pep talk. First to take the plunge is Ash, the boss. Just by nature of the fact that you're the boss, people are going to change their behaviour and the way they interact with you based on the hierarchy. Now, I've got a hunch that there's nothing in your DNA that is directive or hierarchical at all as a person. Is that a fair call? Yeah, I agree. But unfortunately you find yourself in a position where you have to play the role of a CEO or a managing director because you are that role. Yeah. And what that means is that there's a whole bunch of people that watch your behaviour on a daily basis that you can't see and they make judgments based on that. Yeah. You're super smart, yeah. you think fast, you're passionate, so you're an intense person, so you're intimidating. Yeah. I know that might find, yeah, sound strange, uh, yeah, but it yeah. Is, yeah. It is weird to hear that, but yeah. So there are people in the group who won't say things because you're the boss. Yeah. So I'm really interested to know how you start to break that down. Yeah. Because if you keep doing that... Are you going to tell me? <laughs> I'd like to know. <laughs> yeah, if you keep doing it that way, obviously you're going to lose a whole bunch of creative energy that comes out of conflict. Q John the Junior. He has stepped up to the leadership challenge and made his presence felt out here in the wilderness. But what about when he returns to the workplace? How often do you speak and feel like you're not heard or speak and feel overlooked because you're the junior guy and you couldn't possibly have anything important to say? Um, I'd say maybe 50-50. Right. Are you happy with that? No. You're not saying everything that you feel like you need to say. Is that true? Um, yeah, at times. I think when there's certain sort of big decisions that need to be made that... Um, we don't speak our mind and we just kind of keep it all happy and keep it all merry. Yep, yeah. abs- I and think that might not necessarily be the best option when we right. decide something. So I actually need you not to be polite. Does that make sense? Okay. A little bit scary to hear that. Sure, <laughs> sure. But what I'm saying is that the organisation that he leads needs creativity, it needs innovation, it needs conflict, positive conflict, right? Okay. And it can't get positive conflict if everybody is managing themselves so they're only saying things that are high risk or that somebody else wants to hear. Okay. Does that make sense? That does make sense, yeah. The organisation is fearful of feeding back any information negatively to Ash as the CEO, and if Ash really wants that feedback, he's going to have to become much more vulnerable and open the pathway up so it's easy to give that feedback and be shown to be taking on that feedback and be doing things very differently. So it's crunch time for John the Junior and Ash, the reluctant boss. Later that night, John decides to test Travis's theory that honesty is the best policy like be and conflict isn't all bad. Yeah. We can be a bit more frank with each other and um, a bit more upfront about how I'm feeling and take that, take that risk that, you know, what he's going to say, he might, you know, just say, suck it up, John, or he go, might go, you know, we can do something about it, you know, and then from that I'll make a decision if this is a place I still want to be at or, you know, if I think for my career I might need to move on somewhere else. Yeah. Hopefully, it's just pure coincidence that boss Ash has occupied the higher ground, forcing John to look up to him. It can be just a lot of testosterone, like flying around a lot, and so a lot of the, sort of the smaller guys in that sometimes feel that they can't 
speak up. I know to a point sometimes I felt that if I'm going to bring something up, I'm going to get paid out or laughed at, you know, kind of thing, that yeah. my sort of point's not valid because I'm a bit lower down the order and that. Yeah. And me to you, it seems like a small thing, but then 10 people all doing it to you, it yeah. adds up to you. Yeah. And I don't see the other nine people, 10 people, so. Has John yeah, let the genie out of the bottle? Yeah, New recruit Jar boldly contributes his two cents worth. Uh, yeah, I'm talking to you right now, but I'm not saying what I'm thinking. Hmm. And that's... Yeah. You know what I mean? Why am I not saying what I'm thinking is because there is some subconscious idea about the, the response I'm going to get from you. And that's some, that, that for me is the critical element in all of this. The, that's the root of it all is people feel scared to communicate or we haven't communicated that you should be able to communicate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you need to yeah. communicate yeah. so you can communicate. Yeah. <laughs> from little acorns, big trees grow. For the over-polite boys from Soap, that was a great leap forward. It's the last day, and Travis sets the final challenge. So guys, you need a little bit more information because it's not quite over yet. You do have some more travelling to do. And what I'd like you to do is to continue up along the main creek until you get to a point where two tribes meet. And at that point, you'll find a track which will lead you to where the greedy white man digs, where you'll find another path that'll be the pathway to your rescue. So good luck, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Thank you. Travis. Thanks, Chris. Just repeat what he just said. <laughs> Let's write it down. <laughs> 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 Going to the creek. Up the creek. Where two tribes meet. And then there'll be a Continuing to where the greedy white man is. Is that um mine? Digs. There's a mine of some sort. And soap boss Ash has finally stepped up to the leadership plate. Let's go. The rain is rugged, the sun is as hot as ever, and they're still far from home. Oh man, wow. I feel like I'm on Mars. But there's a new sense of drive and purpose about the mates from Soap Creative. Especially John, who's not quite so junior anymore. Go, go up for him, yes. We've worked out uh, the two tribes meeting together. Is the, the limestone rock with the darker rock, um, where it comes and meets with the red rock. Um, so we're thinking that's probably a simple way to distinguish between the two areas. Yeah, different way. And then there's a track that's white and looks like a dirt road. Yeah, that's a track there. Ripper! Hey, boys. Yes. Having solved the first half of Travis's riddle, they forge ahead, hey. confident they're on the right track. Pretty good to me. Yeah, like a track. I think it's safe yeah. to say that that's where the gritty white man digs. Yeah. Let's go, guys. Almost there. And now it's the end, which is good. Elder statesman Matt overcame his fears in the caves and now sees that, in theory, anything is possible. I think the fact that we've spent this time together, there's no doubt that between the six of us, we'll have a different way of approaching things. Like, even towards the end here, again, we were discussing things a lot more assertively, like, you know, just say, no, you're doing the wrong thing there. I think just knowing that you've actually said, this is what I think is wrong or right, mm. and making sure that they understand that, you know, that that's your opinion. All right, two scouts. First one of the road wins. <laughs> <laughs> Send up a scout. Uh, <laughs> 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 ah, awesome. All right, just take our bags off. It's the end of the road. So yeah, I'm, now I'm completely buggered. And even reluctant boss Ash knows things have to change. Maybe I'm not as approachable as I, as I think I am. And I think I had probably influence over the group because of my uh, role in the company. But um, yeah, so I work on my, my leadership skills. Look who it is. Hey, 
fantastic job. You made it. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. I feel loved. <laughs> this is a fundamentally different place to hang out in compared to their workplace. And it really starts to bring to surface what is happening back in the workplace. If this organisation is going to continue to grow and to flourish, people need to be speaking their mind, speaking the truth and telling it the way it is. And they need to be less concerned about upsetting people and more concerned about getting great outcomes for the organisation. So this is our opportunity to start doing that now. Honesty and group hugs are all well and good in the brutal wilderness. But will that stuff still wash back in the big smoke? John the Junior will be hoping so. John the Junior has definitely gone now. Um, the guys that I went away with, we've come back, definitely don't treat me like that anymore. A lot of the guys that are above me are starting to see that, you know, I'm wanting to take on the challenges, so a lot more responsibility and um, things are coming my way. There was a lot of sharing. It was like... Reluctant boss Ash has found there's an upside to being a leader. You know, when I really want something done, I can just kind of uh, put my kind of, you know, boss hat on, if you will. But he's still coming to grips with the new image. I just don't like the word boss. I guess I'm not scared of the, I'm not scared of the, the idea of it. Yeah, just the word sounds really uh, uh, corporate. I hate, that, I hate that word. Yeah. Was there another, what's another word for bot manager? Yeah.